Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. And in today's video, we are going to be answering a two-part question written into my YouTube channel. And let's just jump right into it. So the question comes from Nick Bratton and he says, hi, Adrena. Just a side note, my name is spelled E-D-R-I-N-A. He says, thanks for the video. I have two questions. The first one is about income. When I receive a payment from a client, it goes into my QuickBooks as income. How do I properly track a payment to myself then? Would that be considered a contractor payment? And is that categorized as personal? So I'll just stop right there. Um, he gets into the next question and we'll get into the next question, but let's just um, answer this one first. And before I get to my reply to Nick, I just wanted to make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed and make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know that you're watching and that you enjoy these types of videos. I also wanted to mention that I have a weekly newsletter that I send out every single week, giving you all of the updates from Accounting by Adrena, including blog posts and YouTube videos and things like that. You can also follow me on Instagram at adrena.calderon. And I do send out a monthly newsletter. And in this monthly newsletter, I provide a like free PDF that you can download. And I just think that it's just super helpful for you if you're looking for free templates in order to help keep your finance life organized. So Let's get into my reply. Nick wrote into uh, my YouTube channel on the QuickBooks self-employed version video. So I am assuming that Nick is using a QuickBooks self-employed version um, to categorize his financials. And just let me just step back and give you some sort of context because what I wanna make sure every entrepreneur is aware of, every small business owner, uh, whoever's watching this video, I want to make sure that you're aware that there's this thing called commingling funds. <laughs> and when you have a bank account that includes both your personal and your business transactions, income expenses, and all that stuff, they the IRS considers that as commingling funds, and they they don't like it. So we want to make sure that we're staying far, far, far away from that. It can cause all sorts of legal issues down the line. And if you are doing that, I would just encourage you to go to the bank today and open up a small business checking account. Because in this question, you're basically asking, so I have my business checking account and I have my personal checking account. So when I receive a payment from my business checking account, like all of the income gets deposited there, when I pay myself out into my personal checking account, how does that how does that work? How do I categorize that? What's the best way to make sure that you are properly tracking your income? So when you receive a payment from your business checking account, that is considered income, rightfully so, and should be stated as such on your profit and loss statement. So when you file your taxes, your end, especially if you're filing Schedule C, you'll know all of your income that is included with your business financials. Now, when you make a payment to yourself, you're basically moving money from your business checking account into your personal checking account. That is considered a transfer. So however you want to label it, people have called it like owner's transfer before, owner's pay, but basically it's simple as that. It's just a transfer, especially if you're using a Schedule C. Nowhere on your Schedule C are you including that transfer unless here's the, the big part of it. If you are not using a Schedule C and if you are filing as an S Corp, paying yourself out as payroll, that is the only instance when you are considered the employee of your business. So that is, now we're getting into entity types. So like big disclaimer here, this is not my uh, wheelhouse. This is not my expertise. I would advise you to talk to a lawyer, to talk to a tax professional, a CPA, your tax accountant to get like actual legal advice. These are just things that I'm sharing with you based off of my own personal experience in one moment in time. So big disclaimer here <laughs> that I, I am not a lawyer and I am not a CPA, so I cannot 
be giving you legal advice as such. But what I have learned over the years is when you are set up as a sole proprietor, you're paying yourself out as the business owner on payroll, which means you are an employee of your business. Now, when we're using QuickBooks self-employed, that means we're not using, we're not an S corp. We're not, you know, paying ourselves out as payroll. So therefore it is only a simple transfer from your business checking account into your personal checking account. Okay, I hope I didn't muddy the waters too much with that. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Now, the second part of Nick's question is this. My second question is about vehicle expenses. I use my truck for business and personal use, so I track my mileage. When I fill up my tank, should I just use my personal bank account or my business bank account for that? Is that a business expense or is it just part of tracking my mileage? And I love this question because it does talk about that, that nuance of, you know, you are an entrepreneur, you are a small business owner, and you also have a personal life on the side, you know, it's not, it, it's both, it's yes and, you know. So for this question, here's how I would do it, and you can talk to your tax accountant to make sure that this works for them. There's basically a couple of different ways that you can do it. Here's the method that I would use. Track your expenses on the personal side for your car. So use your personal checking account to pay for gas, auto expenses, and all of that good stuff. When you track your miles, you will also let your tax accountant know how much money you've spent on your vehicle over the course of the year. So you will have totals of, you know, gas, auto expenses, your um, car registration, anything else related to your car, all of those expenses, make sure that you tell your tax accountant, this is how much I spent on my car over the course of the year. And you don't want to use your business account to pay for these expenses because it is both personal and business. And we talked about commingling funds earlier, and that would be considered commingling funds. So it's a better business practice to use your personal card, your personal checking account, and account for the expense on the business side when doing your taxes, okay? Especially because... This comment came in from using QuickBooks self-employed, so I'm assuming that he is also filing a Schedule C with his tax accountant. So all of that information you would need from your personal checking account. So make sure you keep a listing of all of that. And what I normally did um, before was I had a spreadsheet and I would just keep track of, you know, all of the mileage on my spreadsheet. So all of the meetings that I did and like, make sure you keep really good details because um, that's going to be really useful in the long run. So what I do is I have a spreadsheet that says, you know, January, February, March, April, May, so on and so forth. And then the date, who I was meeting with and the business purpose so then that's listed on one line, the total number of miles round trip. And so all of that is listed for every month, all of my meetings, anytime I traveled for work, that's all listed on this one spreadsheet. All of my mileage is totaled up on that same spreadsheet. And then I use that at the end of the year because I am not about to be commingling funds about anything. And it's not that you know, my car is not strictly used for business purposes. It's also used for personal purposes. So I definitely don't want to have that conflict of interest in my, you know, personal finances. So that is what I would do in terms of like tracking mileage, making sure that you have the date, the business purpose, and then the total mileage. Um, let me know if you guys want like a free PDF of that. Um, I can easily turn that into something that you guys can download. So I'll probably send that out in my newsletter at some point this year. But yeah, so just making sure that you have detailed copious notes about all of the, the mileage that you did for your business and then that you're keeping receipts for your gas, auto expenses, you know, repairs and, you know, tires, whatever else you need to keep maintenance on your vehicle. All right, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was really helpful. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions down in the uh, comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.